you guys doing? My name is Chris Matthews. I'm a relationship coach and licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'm back with another video. And today we're going to target those who are in premarital counseling, just have gotten engaged, or thinking about taking their relationship to the next level of commitment. I'm going to give you guys 10 different things you guys need to talk about or address so they don't become issues when you do get married. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. First, how you're going to share your money or income. That can look like a lot of different ways for a lot of different couples. I actually have done a video on merging money and why money is important in a marriage. But in short, make sure you have an understanding of what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate. A lot of times in couples sessions or therapy, there are going to be issues around either one of the three things, how much money's being made, how the money's being made and how the money's being spent. Make sure that's a question or those questions for that matter are brought up in premarital counseling and you and your partner can come to the table with the needs, wants and expectations around your finances. Second, second thing you want to look at in relationship work hours, the partner you met while dating, may not be the same partner you have when you're married or it might. Let me go a little bit more into that. If you met a partner who you saw typically on the weekends or on their days off and you got to just have a fun time together and then you marry that partner and then you realize Monday through Friday during the week, they have a high demanding job where you don't see them. That's going to be a whole different culture as it was, compared to when you were dating. So make sure before you get married, you're walking through and counseling, what does the day to day look like? And what you'll find is that as you progress your life with this individual, you may think about having kids in their mind, Monday through Friday is work. If they're in a high demanding career that has limitless hours, then you may be raising those children by yourself Monday through Friday. If they're a truck driver who goes over the road, if they're in the practice of law or a demanding career such as a chef or an entrepreneur, they don't typically have 40 hour work weeks. Those individuals work until the job gets done. So make sure that you're processing with your partner. What are the work hours? Third thing you want to consider in a premarital or engagement counseling phase, alternative attractions, alternative attractions can be, individuals that your partner's working with are spending a lot of time with and they could draw them away from you. So make sure that you address certain questions like, are you going to be hosting same sex or opposite sex partners that you're attracted to on out of town business ventures? Are you going to be taking people to dinner and being in romantic settings? Are you in an industry where you have to be an actor or actress where you're engaging in emotional scenes with another person? These are things you want to think about. It could be something even as simple as if you marry a, a massage therapist that's touching over and on another person all day, that might make you uncomfortable. So make sure that you're aware of alternative attractions that could impede your ability to feel secure in that relationship. The fourth area you want to look at faith based practices. Your partner may have only attended church with you while you were dating in order to just court you or to get close to you. Once you get married, you might realize they're not as spiritual as you thought they were. Make sure that you have that dialogue around expectations when it comes to faith based practices. And you may also change your beliefs as you grow as an individual, give you and your partner space to change those beliefs, but also update each other. In my book, I write about how I was working with a couple and they were God fearing Christians when they got married, but over time he had began to steer away from Christianity. He was looking at other alternative approaches to God and religion. And that hurt his wife. His wife had thought that he had abandoned his love for God 
and she was questioning her ability to be with someone that didn't believe in God. Over time, through counseling, she realized that he wasn't questioning his ability with God. He was just seeking a deeper, richer fulfillment spiritually. If that couple had not talked about where he was and where she was and had the help and support, they may have ended the marriage. Make sure you go into a marriage already having those dialogues. Number five, have the sex talk early and often. I recently did a video on how to have a talk with your partner about sex. And the three things that the video goes into, I want to highlight right now for you. Make sure you talk about the amount, the frequencies, and the types. Those three things matter. As you transition, your sex life will transition. Amounts and frequencies and types may alter based on when you have kids. They may based on physical elements or illnesses that might occur in your life. So that is very unique in the sense of your sex life may change as you change. So you need to have updates on that. The person you marry, and I hear this all the time, when you marry a person you were dating and you were having sex like rabbits and then you get married and then it's like the stock market crashing, what happened? That's because people change. So have that dialogue before marriage. Hey, are we going to be having sex like this when we get married? You know, what are the expectations? Number six, if I had to pick one on the list to pay a lot of attention to, it would be all of them, but especially this one. Managing your own identities. Just because you're getting married, it doesn't mean that you're no longer yourself. You're actually inviting yourself into someone else's life and vice versa. Who you are, what you like to do, what you not like to do, that's not going to just magically change because you guys got married. The worst thing you can do for your marriage is lose who you are. Your partner was attracted to you. So if you stop being you, they're going to stop being attracted to you. If you like to go to the gym and work out, if you like to go hang out with friends, if you like to travel, if you like to go to games, if you like to do things that are festive, keep doing that. Sustain your identity. Don't sacrifice you for a relationship because at the end of the day, your partner will notice that and then neither of you will be happy. Number six. Parenting styles. Make sure before you get married, you're talking to a clinician or each other about your upbringing. Everything you need to know about your partner, you can find in their family of origin. You can identify in some capacity why your partner does what they do or why they don't do what they do based on their upbringing. Make sure that you invest the money and time to hire a well-trained clinician that's going to go through that journey with you and your partner. And the reason why I believe in therapy when it comes to processing your partner's family of origin, that's a very touchy topic. And you don't want your partner to feel judged by you, and you don't want to unturn a stone that they haven't yet processed for themselves. If you wait to do that when you're married, at that point it's going to feel like a tax. So go ahead and get that out the way in the premarital and engagement phase. Conflict management. Why is it important to manage conflict prior to marriage? Because when you get married, things are going to speed up. I recall working with a couple, and prior to getting married, they never had any real conflict. Then they move in, they have kids, and everything sped up, and they didn't have time when they were calm enough to process how to handle conflict. The best way to approach conflict is before the waves start to rattle and the storm is already there. You want to approach conflict when things are calm, cool, and collect. That's when you're going to be in the best space to have the productive conversations. So that could look like you and your partner describing different ways that you respond when triggered. So for example, if your partner is one that shuts down, that could evoke in you a pursuer mentality and they may not have the time to process what they need in order to approach you. So have a dialogue on the steps to take. You may say to your partner, hey, look, I'm a fixer. If you get mad at me, I definitely want to know so we can fix it. I'm solution focused. I don't want to be in a, in a moment where you're just mad and I don't know. I don't want to read your mind. You can email me. You can text me. You can talk to me. Just make sure I know what's going on. 
it's easier to have that conversation before your partner's already upset and they've shut down and then they don't know what you need and you don't know what they need. Number nine, people, places, and things. I like to think of a marriage as two companies merging together. When you have a merger, everybody's up for rehire. The people, places, and things that you like to enjoy by yourself, they're important because your partner and you both need to have your own identity. However, you need to also evaluate the people, places, and things that you're gonna share and engage in together. And that needs to be a rehiring so you both are on the same page. Your spouse may not desire that when you guys get married or if you wanna to go to the next level, you sustain a relationship with your ex or anybody you had slept with prior to them. Your partner may be okay with that. Once again, that's you guys' decision to be made, but you have to be willing to embrace that. If you can't give up being friends with an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or someone you slept with, then you might need to find a partner that's comfortable with that. That can be a big deal breaker for a lot of couples. When it comes to places, if you're a smoker and your partner's not a smoker, they may not want to go to the cigar bar with you. If you hang out at the cigar bar or places where alcohol is present and they're sober, then that could be a deal breaker because that's where you entertain yourself predominantly and they don't want to involve, be involved in that. Things or activities. If you're a fitness guru and you love to work out and your partner is a, is a couch potato but just has good genes, you may need to look at, okay, well, a lot of my activities might be physical and there's going to be sedimentary. Is this going to go anywhere? So you want to evaluate people, places, and things that you're going to share because a marriage is about shared time. Ten, last one. This last one is very near and dear to me because I believe in this wholeheartedly. It's why I became a counselor. It's why my marriage works. It's why I believe other people's marriages work. You need to establish a relationship developmental plan. I know that sounds very formal, right? That doesn't really sound sexy at all. You don't want to go to your wife and be like, baby, we need to have our relationship developmental plan, right? That doesn't sound sexy. I know it doesn't. But this is the part I want you to hear. If you fail to prepare and prevent now, I promise you're going to be repairing and repenting later. That is not just a tagline is something that you want to look at when it comes to understanding what's on the other side. Couples, people in general for that matter, are predictive individuals. We need to know what's ahead. That's why we check the weather before going outside. So you want to make sure that you and your partner are always a couple years ahead. You're either growing or dying. There is no stagnation in a marriage. You're not just going to be staying the same. You're either growing toward the same thing or you're dying away from the same things. You want to make sure that you're talking about your vision. What does your vision look like as individuals? What type of careers do you want to pursue? How do you want to raise kids? Where do you want to live? If you refer back to my eight dimensions video, eight dimensions of premarital counseling, I go through different dimensions that are associated with wellness that you want to talk about with a premarital counselor, and more importantly, with your partner. So this is my list of 10 different areas that you want to address before getting married. I hope this is a helpful video for those that are engaged or in the premarital phase or who just simply want to take a snapshot and evaluate where their relationship and marriage currently is. Once again, my name is Chris Matthews. I'm your relationship coach, licensed marriage and family therapist. Please subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you guys on the other side for the next video. Can never go back, I gotta take